A really clever way of filtering your data within a table is to use the data slicer. Now this isn't available when you just have data in a normal range. As soon as you make it into a table, as well as all the other additional bits we've got and explored, you get the data slicer option. So let's explore the data slicer. We're going to make use of the contacts extract T and C. You simply need to be in your table, and we have a lot of information in our table, so anywhere is fine. Then on the table tools context sensitive ribbon, there's our insert slicer option. If we give that a click, it asks which of our columns, because these are all the column headings, we would like to have as a slicer. Well, let's take the city and the gender. That will create us two slicers. Okay. Now, if you've not seen these before, what slicers are are effectively floating filtering boxes. So this little box here is the gender slicer, and I can move it across, place it where I want, can go up to the top of the sheet and keep on going to the bottom of the data. It's only an object, so I can resize it. There's only ever going to be F and M in here, so this can be resized to be a lot smaller. Now the city, there's a lot of cities, so that has a scroll bar, and I'm not really going to be able to expand that enough to see all of those. With the slicer selected, so either that one or that one, you get a slicer context sensitive ribbon, which allows you to control the color scheme. So maybe that I want to change the gender one to a bluey color, or even in the drop down, go for a darky purple color. That probably clashes with the actual table color. So let's go for red instead. Now, the way that these slices work is that they filter the data. So in the gender column, we effectively only have two values, F and M. If I now click on M, I see that that filter is applied. So I've got little blue numbers to indicate a filter is applied. And down in the status bar, it says 52 of 100. And if I have a look at the gender column, See, the advantage here is I don't actually have to be looking at the gender column. We are, they're all M's because I've applied the gender slicer. If I click on F, then it filters and only shows me whose values are F. And that's 48 of the 100. If I want both, then I simply control click both of them. Or choose this little option here that allows you to multiple select without the control key. Let's put both of these back on. So we've got M and F both in place. Now, the other one will filter by the city. So at the moment, they're all selected. That's the default. If I then click on Sunbury, only Sunbury is selected. I only see three records. If then I control click St. Leonard's, Springwood, they then get added into my filter list. I can work in conjunction with the gender one and click on M and I only see males, Springwood, and St. Leonard's. Put the females back and I get all three towns back. So one of those towns dropped out of the filtering when I only chose males because there's only females that live there. So you can work these in conjunction with each other. If at any point you don't want to be filtered by this particular slicer, you can use this little option here to clear the filter, and that will bring all of your towns back. Once you don't want a particular slicer anymore, you can simply click on it and press delete on the keyboard, and it will go. It just leaves me with the gender slicer. The little filtering options. You can choose any of the columns that you've got, any number of the columns that you've got, and you'll get these floating slices that show you the unique values within that column to then allow you to filter by. So we click into the table, we insert the slicer, we choose the column or columns we want to have a slicer for. So I could perhaps go for address type. And what about occupation? These two would be much shorter in their list. Occupation only has a few items, so that can be resized much, much smaller. Dress type only has two items, so that can be resized a lot smaller. There are other options in the slicer ribbon, as well as changing the color scheme, which we've seen. We can control the 3D layering. So you can see if I move a dress type over, it obscures gender because it was added previously. Or I can make it go behind gender by using these options here, send to back, and then it's behind the gender. So you've got stacking capabilities. You can also change how the columns display. Currently, they're listed as one column. If I go two, then you can see how there's only two, so they get put alongside each other. If I do that with occupation, because there's four, you get two, two, and two, two. But then you can't read all the text because the box isn't big enough. So it's getting the right layout for your particular slicer. These work quite well side by side, and probably the gender one would as well. So just M and F allows you to make the slicer that little bit smaller and place them where you want them on the screen. So that's the slicing options. Nice little floating filter quick selection, which can be quite useful, particularly if the column you're trying to filter by is off the display area. 
Whereas with the filtering using the drop down arrows, I need to go to that actual column to make the selection and then potentially have to scroll back to see the data that I want to see. So it's just another way of applying filters, a nice little clever way. They're saved with the file, so when the file's reopened, you get the same little floating slices. So anyone else opening the same file gets the same little floating slices. So you could help them out by giving them some slices to filter the data that they're interrogating.